So let's talk about the spring. So the spring is a pressure based flourish that lets you shoot cards from one hand to another. And I mean shoot as in like a very literal sense, like they, they basically like they're being shot across through pressure, right? And so compared to a dribble, it's a lot more aggressive, whereas the dribble and the waterfall, they're a lot more like uh, you, you're letting the cards fall. Uh, this is like you're actually using pressure, right? So this will bend the cards. So uh, again, that's a word of advice. It will bend the cards. So uh, before you learn it, uh, learn it with a deck that you don't really care about. So of course, before I get into any uh, sort of uh, teaching, I do like to go over some history. So generally, the spring is extremely old. Uh, it's it's just old, like the dribble. Uh, the very first source, I believe, of the dribble comes from Professor Hoffman's Modern Magic back in 1876. So again, it's a, it's also very old. And one thing that's really interesting is that Erdnase actually wrote about the spring. Uh, he wrote about a force using the spring. Uh, so if you don't know what Erdnase is, it's an uh, expert at the card table uh, that written back in 1902. So. Yeah, so again, it's a very old move, and the fact that Erdn is run about it, out of all people, it shows that, you know, it, it's uh, relevant throughout history. But yeah, so before we start, I just want to go into uh, just some uh, heads up again. This will bend the card, so, you know, that's, uh, again, uh, yeah, that's a fair warning. And uh, if you're just learning this, the spring, uh, you should probably uh, you should probably use a softer deck or a broken in deck. So in most cases, a thinner deck will be softer, or you know, a deck that you've used for a long while, they'll be broken in. So you know, that'll be easier for a spring. So before I go into the spring, I do want to explain uh, pressure-based moves and why they sort of work. So when you look at cards, right, they're flexible, but even though they're flexible, they do want to return to the original uh, state, right? So here you have like a flat card, right? If I bend it, well, they won't remain in uh, that position. When you bend it, well, look at the moment that when I release pressure, well, they tend to remain, uh, they want to go back to the original position. And that is uh, how pressure works, right? Is that you build up pressure by bending cards and the moment that you release them, they tend to shoot out to go back to the original state. So that's how pressure-based moves work and why uh, they snap, right? So when I do pressure-based moves, I do want to handle everything near the fingertips, right? And so, for example, if I'm doing everything by the corner or uh, so if I'm doing uh, stuff with my middle finger or my thumb, for example, when I bend it, I do want to have it uh, at my fingertips because this lets me decide where I want the card to shoot up from. Because if the card is deeper in my grip, well now I can't release pressure uh, like where I want to go, right? So if everything is at its fingertips, I can choose to shoot up from my, uh, my middle finger or my thumb at any given moment, and it will work because, again, they're at my fingertips. But if they're deeper in my grip, well, then it'll be harder for the card to, you know, slide out of my hand. So when I do pressure-based moves, again, I want everything to be at my fingertips. And yeah, and also, uh, just a word of advice, I don't want, uh, the card to remain in its like bent state for too long because then it will settle and eventually it will become bent and it will sort of lose its elasticity so it will lose that snappiness so you know i do pressure based moves uh so two tips is fingertip uh fingertips so i want to handle everything at its fingertips and also i want everything to be sort of uh, quick i don't want everything to be uh to drag on too long or else the card will lose its snappiness. So yeah, just two words of advice and the principle behind uh, springing cards. All right, so let's get started into the spring. But before we get into the book, oh, but before we get into the spring itself, let's talk about the other hand, the catching hand, because I think that's more important than learning the mechanics of the spring first. So for the catching hand, you want to have the deck in a straddle grip. So if you don't know what a straddle grip is, it's basically if you're if you're grabbing a deck, your thumb should be on the side of the deck like so, and your index and your your pinky should be straddling the deck while your middle and ring finger are just uh, relaxing on the the side of the deck like so. 
right? So this is the straddle grip, but for the spring, you only want to remove the deck and just expand this, uh, this hand, right? So now you have this basically claw grip, and the only way the cards can escape is basically through like here, the wrist, right? But basically, uh, you want the cards to be shot from into this section, right? So here, a straddle grip assures that the cards are going to remain uh, in this little cradle, cradle, I don't know what, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's basically going to be caught in here, right? So it's basically going to be here, and you can see that even though it's open, this flesh of the thumb will be, uh, you know, stopping it from moving around. So let's just say like, it, it's like messy like so. And you know, it, it can ex it can escape, but generally, you know, you're not gonna lean back. So, you know, you're gonna be caught in this um, straddle grip, expanded straddle grip. So again, thumb, thumb on the side like so, uh, index finger and pinky straddling the deck on the short edges, and then your middle and ring finger uh, touching just the side. You remove the deck and then you expand the whole grip and that's your uh, catching hand. So uh, this can move independently from your other hand. So depending on uh, where you want to catch the spring or where do you want to, uh, you know, elongate the spring, you can move it backwards, you can move it forward, maybe off to the side. So, you know, it really doesn't matter where your, uh, where your hand is in relation to your other hand, as long as, you know, you're catching the cards and if you want to elongate it, you know, yeah, do, do whatever, right? So you have to remember that this moves independently. It doesn't have to follow your other hand. Uh, obviously, it just has to follow the cards. That's what I'm getting at, so yeah. Now let's get into uh, the spring itself. So uh, basically, there's gonna be three grips that I'm gonna touch on. So there's gonna be a modified build grip. So uh, this is the oldest grip that uh, I think that, uh, that people use for the spring. And it's mostly used by old school magicians. And so yeah, let's get into the grip. So to start off with uh, the spring, you want to start off in a modified bill grip. The bill grip is basically your middle finger, your ring finger, and your index are touching the short, the front short edge of the deck like so. And your thumb is just contacting the back short edge of the deck while your index is curled on top of the deck. But for the spring, you're going to want to move all your middle ring and pinky fingers off to the side, and you're going to want to uncurl your uh, your index so that's touching the short edge of the deck as well. And you're going to move the thumb onto about the center of the deck, uh, uh, the center of the short edge like so. And then the very next thing that you're going to do is that you're going to apply pressure from both the front and the back, and this causes the deck to basically bevel like so. Well, not bevel, it's basically like bending. So it's doing this, right? This may take some strength, and again, that's why I said, uh, that's why I said you should use a softer deck for this. Now, there are two ways to uh, shoot cards in this, uh, in this grip. One is obviously shooting cards from the back, like so, or shooting cards from uh, the front, like so, right? So how do you accomplish this is basically you're going to, uh, let's start off with shooting from the back first because that's the m conventional method of shooting cards, of spring cards, rather. So once you have this bend, you're going to realize that this basically bevels the, the short edges, right? So if you notice here, right, this, this creates a bevel on both short edges like so. So you can uh, riffle both edges like so, right? And this is important because depending on where you release pressure first, this is going to uh, shoot the cards in that direction. So if I want to shoot the cards from the back, you can tell that there's a bevel over here. And so basically what I'm going to do is that I'm actually just going to flatten out my thumb. So using the bevel, if I just flatten out my thumb, uh, so I'm basically just doing this sort of, right? Uh, this right so it's basically just flattening out and just letting go of the pressure and what this does is that basically just shoots out cards from the back like so I wish I had like a slow-mo camera but you know that's uh, that's that so over here you can see that there's a bevel 
And as I straighten up my thumb, you can see that the cards, the, the thumb that's contacting the cards will gradually like, uh, my thumb will gradually recede from the deck and all that built up pressure will uh, allow the cards to shoot out like so, right? So again, this creates a bevel and now I can basically just flatten out my thumb which allows uh, the cards to shoot out from the back. So you'll notice that my front fingers don't necessarily do anything, they more act as a uh, sort of wall. But with that said, if I want to shoot cards from the front, I'm going to invert the rolls. Now my thumb is, not, uh, is going to act as a wall and now my front fingers are going to flatten out. Right, so now my index, uh, middle finger, ring, and pinky finger are going to flat, uh, flatten out. So you can see, as I shoot cards out, right, they just sort of expand forward like so, right? So again, as I shoot cards out like so, right, they just sort of flatten out. It's it's more of a, it's very slight, but. Uh, eventually you'll see what I'm talking about because you'll see that you know if you need if you want to shoot cards out you have to gradually roll your fingers forward so that is uh, something that you have to take notice of And I think that's about it for the modified build grip. Generally, it's sort of simple. Uh, it's, I mean, uh, I'm teaching this first because it's the oldest one, but uh, the other springs do run on the same principle of flattening, flattening out your fingers. So in this case, you know, flattening out your thumb, it is very important for the other, um, the other uh, springs, right? And obviously the bevel as well. So yeah. Next, we'll go into the corner grip. That's the more modern handling of the uh, of the spring, and uh, there there are a couple of ways that uh, you can uh, touch on the the corner grip. So the corner grip, uh, it, I think it depends from person to person. But Jerry Seskowski from Encyclopedia of Card Flourishes, uh, he teaches the corner grip uh, spring from a uh, from your using your pinky, right? So he does this. But the Verts or some other people teach it from uh, you know a a ring finger to thumb uh, corner grip. But me personally, I like doing the uh, the uh, the middle finger just because you know it's. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's not really a reason for it. I think I just badly learned it, but you know, that's the thing. But with that said, if you do want to do like things like a thin spring, then it is, um, then it is encouraged that you do a ring finger or a middle finger spring. So in which case a pinky finger spring isn't really like ideal. Now uh, let's get into uh, the grip. So the grip is extremely uh, similar to, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> to just like a normal corner grip. So here you have uh, your thumb resting on the corner of the of the spring of uh, the deck like so. And so uh, yeah, and your middle finger is uh, going to be on the opposite corner as well. I mean, generally they're not, uh, well, I mean, the thumb is on the corner and the middle finger is around the corner. It doesn't have to be exactly on the corner, but your mil uh, your index finger is going to be next to your next to your middle finger while your ring and pinky finger are just going to be curled on uh, curled off to the side so like so All right so this is just the grip so and now you're going to apply pressure just the same as uh, the the modified bill grip so you're going to apply pressure downwards with your middle finger and your thumb so you're going to bend the deck like so All right so this is what's happening over here and now uh, you'll notice that again this creates a bevel right so this creates a bevel which is ideal for uh, shooting cards out right 
So, if I want to shoot cards out from the back, you'll notice that this basically conforms with the shape of my thumb over here, which means that now if I want to shoot cards out from the back, all I need to do is I want to flatten, uh, flatten out my thumb, which allows me to shoot cards seamlessly like so, right? And so again, it's just the same thing of releasing pressure and flattening out my thumb or rolling out uh, or rolling my thumb, which allows me to, uh, you know, just bring cards, right? Like so. Like so, right? So again, it's just this principle of flattening, flattening out, flat, oh, I can't pronounce it. Flattening out your thumb, which, you know, just allows the cards to roll off this, uh, this thumb, right? Because if I don't flatten out, flatten out my thumb, it, it just doesn't work, right? It's just, you know, it's kind of gross. But if I flatten, flatten, oh, it's it's been a long day, okay? <laughs> if you just flatten out your thumb, then you'll notice here's how much softer it is, right? Because here it creates the opportunity for the cards to escape from the bevel. So I'm basically, you know, just doing this like so, right? Here, I don't know if I can get this on camera, but just this, right? So that's that's that on a smaller scale and without as much pressure, right? Now, if you want to shoot cards from the front, it's the exact same thing. But rather than shooting cards out from all your fingers, you just need to do it from uh, your middle finger. So again, you just flat, flatten out your thumb, uh, your middle finger, I mean. So your thumb just acts as a wall. And you're just going to do the same thing, except now you're flattening out your middle finger, which allows the cards to shoot out from the front. So it's the same thing as the, as the thumb. Uh, thumb spring right so it's over here and like so right so you can notice that my middle finger is again flattening out like so right so yeah And then we can go over the last grip. The last grip is essentially just a uh, a deep, you know, grip. It doesn't really have a name, but I've seen like some magicians do it. Again, I wouldn't, I don't necessarily do this one. I do like the the corner grip more. But yeah, no, this is an option if you want. So here you're going to jam the upper right corner of the deck into the webbing of your uh, pinky and ring finger. So if you notice here, you have a bit of like skin over here. So you're just going to jam this corner over here. And then your thumb is just going to contact the, uh, the lower left corner of the deck like so. So this is the, 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 the grip, right? So if you notice, you can't spring from the front because all these fingers are in front uh, blocking the front deck. So, you know, uh, that's a disadvantage. But you know, that's that's that, right? But essentially this is going to work the exact same way as a corner grip. Uh, you're just going to roll your thumb and apply downwards pressure with your with your fingers, right? So again, it's in that same uh, corner grip bend. But this time, you know, you can only shoot from the back. So you're in this position and now you, pen, uh, you, you know, you gather up the pressure by bending the cards and now you curl in your thumb, which now allows the opportunity for you to flatten out and, you know, shoot the cards out seamlessly. Now for some general tips on 
on the on the spring, right? Don't bite more than you can chew. So rather than aiming for distance when you do the spring, you should do um, you should aim for consistency, right? So rather than aiming for distance like so, you should do uh, consistency. So aim for shooting cards out consistently in a nice stream rather than looking for uh, distance, right? So consistency, uh, consistency rather than uh, distance. And obviously, I put a lot of emphasis on the bevel, so the bevel will help you a lot. So if you don't create like a bevel when you spring cards, then I think that that's the main problem. Always look to have a bevel and try and uh, exploit it and have fun playing around with pressure and the bevel. Next, we have the rolling and flattening out of the thumb or the fingers. So again, you do have to flat, flatten out your fingers. If you don't, then uh, your cards are just gonna end up really messed up. So, you know, I highly recommend you just flat, flatten out your thumb or your fingers and, you know, that'll help your spring immensely. Next, there's an increase in pressure as there are less cards in your hands. So, as I'm... Uh, as I'm springing cards, there is like a sort of gradual increase in pressure because uh, if if I spring like a card, I, I do a single card, I do need a lot more pressure than springing a, a whole deck. It sounds kind of, kind of counterintuitive, but you'll notice that as I, as I sort of spring cards, I do sort of uh, slightly increase pressure, right? Right, so if I keep the same amount of pressure throughout the entire spring, right, they sort of get stuck in my hands. So I do want to, you know, gradually increase pressure, right, rather than having a consistent amount of pressure. Right, so, you know, there, you do need to vary pressure depending on the deck and whatnot, right? So for me, it's a gradual increase in pressure as there are less cards in my hand. So with the spring, there are a couple of approaches that you can do. Uh, you can obviously do the, the, the normal top to bottom spring. You can do a diagonal, so like so. Or you can do a side to side, like so. Or uh, if you're ballsy enough, then you could do a, a gravity-defying spring. So, you know, bottom to top. Uh, yeah. So, I, I don't know if it catches on camera, but, you know, I'm doing a bottom to top spring right now. So, yeah. Like so. Right? So, you know, that's a thing. Now, with that said, there is another type of spring that I want to go over, and that is the Thin Spring. The, the Thin Spring is a spring created by Dan and Dave, I believe, and it's sort of a flat side-to-side -side spring. So the reason why it's called Thin Spring is because, yeah, it, it sort of like thin, thins out as you as it goes, so that's why it's called the Thin Spring. But yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's generally the same. But yeah, so let's go over the thin spring. So the thin spring is, uh, you do need the corner grip, so you don't know the corner grip yet. Uh, you should probably rewind the video, so yeah. But it's generally the exact same as uh, the corner grip, but now your middle, uh, your ring finger and your pinky are going to go off to the long edge of the deck. For me, it's the right long edge of the deck, like so. And what this causes the deck to do is that when I spring, this basically, you know, changes the rotation of the decks uh, of the of the cards that are being sprung, which causes them to sort of rotate and flatten out, right? So this is what happens uh, if you look, right? You can see that they just sort of flatten out over here, right? Like so, right? So. Yeah, that's the thin spring. So yeah, for the thin spring, it's the exact same thing. You do need the same flattening out of your thumb. And yeah, uh, preferably when you do the thin spring, you're shooting up from the back, so from the thumb, and you're doing uh, 
you know, your ring finger and pinky off to the side. And so yeah, that's a thin spring. But one really interesting thing about the thin spring is that you can actually shoot it across the table. So I'm not sure if like I can do it across a close-up pad, but with a table, you can actually shoot it across of the table like so. And so yeah, so that's how the thin, uh, the thin spring uh, works, right? You can do it across the table like so. Right, and that's because the cards are already like flat, uh, flat, flattening out, and so they just sort of ride on top of each other. All right, so and so yeah, that's about it for the spring. Uh, I'm not sure if I actually went over the mechanics of the spring, but I mean, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just sort of bend the cards, and they just sort of like shoot up from pressure, but. You know, there's some further reading on the spring if you're a magician. So obviously there's Card College Volume 2 by Roberto Giobi. There's the spring tutorial by The Verts. There's Talk About Tricks by Joshua J. Project S by Simon Black. The anti Pharaoh by Christian Emblem. Uh, so yeah, if you don't know the anti Pharaoh, it does rely on the uh, on the on the spring. So you know, if you want to learn this and you know get good at it, then you know. Get, check out the Anti Pharaoh by Christian Emblem. Uh, there's the bound. Uh, there's the bound control by Al Alex Los Los Chis Lo I, I'm not Russian. I can't pronounce it. Los Chilov. I think that's how you pronounce it. Sorry if I butchered it. But yeah, so those are a few further reading. Uh, those are a few resources that you can go and look at if you're interested in uh, the spring. And so yeah, I think that about concludes the, the tutorial, so yeah. But uh, yeah, before I close, I do want to say that I did touch on a couple of spring. There are two spring variations that I didn't touch on. That is Jaspus's uh, Rainbow Spring. So if you don't know what the Rainbow Spring is, it's basically, uh, I, don't, I can't do it, but it's basically a spring where if you gradually turn your hand around and then basically forms like a, a sort of rainbow. And then there's also the Warped Spring by Harry Kuo. Uh, Kuo uh, I, I can't pronounce it. But uh, yeah, he's part of, uh, he did a video with Kuma Films along the Lotus and Hand guys. Uh, so yeah, it showed this giant warped spring. And so yeah, it's just very cool. Uh, Shin Lim did a tutorial on it at some point, but like it's gone, so I can't really like link it to you, otherwise I would, but you know, that's, that's that but yeah so that's about it uh yeah i mean there's not much to go off of generally i do highly recommend you check out the verse tutorial i mean they're cardist i'm not a cardist but you know it's just fun to have you know alternate uh grips uh and to go uh, to go off of right for your spring and also uh i do wanted to touch on spring because uh, when my upcoming videos do require you to, you know, know the spring or at least have baseline knowledge of the spring. And you know, if I teach the dribble, I might as well just teach the other like cascade or the card drops, right? So might as well. But yeah, so that's about it and see you guys next time.